Hey gang, it's your buddy Platt here for another homebrew tasting. This should be homebrew tasting number four. Um, we have got four things to try today, but I want to start off with the fifth thing we should have been trying today. Uh, in mid-March, I made a video about making your own uh, wine cooler, alcopop, alternative beverage, whatever you wanted to call it. You're kind of smearing off ices, Bacardi Breeze, and stuff like that. Uh, in the video, we took a pound and a half of malt extract, added it to one gallon of water. We were going to let it ferment. We were then going to filter. I was going to carbonate using uh, using the soda stream machine, and we were going to use a like Kool-Aid concentrate flavor. Just come up with our own, you know, malt beverage. Um, a couple of quick things. First, in the video, I talked about using a carbon filter because in the industrial large brewery setting, they use a carbon filter to filter out um, all the color. They basically get to a clear, neutral base before they add whatever coloring or flavoring they do for the malt beverage. And I suggested using a like a Beretta water filter with their carbon filter to filter that. Don't do that. That didn't work. Uh, that liquid's just too thick sweet, what have you, those filters are built for water, they're just the, the size of the filter is too small for it to work, so don't, don't do that. Uh, also, the main reason uh, I'm bringing it up and, and why we're not tasting it is, yours truly had an accident, I broke, I broke the glass from mirrors in, it spilled all over the place, it's a huge mess. So I have whipped up another batch, it should be ready soon, I will put it in a future home brewing uh, video. Uh, I will leave the link up here to, to that video so you can see it, but uh, we will get around to tasting it and uh, seeing if we are successful making a, uh, our own wine cooler. The four candidates we have today though are our homemade port, the Pinot Noir we made using a wine kit, our cornflake beer, and then our vanilla milkshake pale ale. Let's start off with the homemade port wine. Uh, I believe we made that on uh, April, about April 25th or so. Uh, we took, we made our own base wine using just store-bought grape juice. And uh, just like a port wine, we start the fermentation process, but we didn't let it go complete. We didn't want to ferment out all that sugar like they do with Pinot Noir or a, a port wine. Uh, we let it ferment for roughly about 48 hours. We got to about 6% alcohol by volume. And then we added our grape spirit. We used just store-bought brandy. And it stopped the fermentation. And again, we left that residual sugar over. Um, just like with port wine, we wanted to get a little aging. We got exposed to a little bit of oak. So what I used was one of these little oak spirals. They sell sometimes now in your liquor store or they sell at homebrew shops or you can find it online. And that allows you to age in a bottle of water. And so I threw that in there. It's been about a month or so. Uh, we got, I did a little quick math. We're at about 20% alcohol by volume between the little alcohol we got fermentation and then what I added in grape spirits were around 20% alcohol by volume. So let's give this a try. All right, got a nice little ruby color. It's an interesting nose. That, kids, is not bad at all. I think uh, we might could fool some people with that. Plenty of sweetness. Remember, we didn't ferment out all the sugar. Um, I still have the wood spiral in there. I get a little bit of uh, I get a little bit of the wood. Um, there is some complexity there. Maybe get some uh, leathery notes. Um, this is not quick, quite as thick or viscous at some ports. Um, but definitely we are not far off the taste. Uh, again, this has only been one month. It's only been exposed to that wood for one month. Uh, even though that little screw, the way it's designed, is exposed to a lot of wood. But uh, this is something we might have to give a try again another three or four months. See how that wood reacts. See, you know, again, let the aging process go. There's still... 
there's still chemical reactions going on even though we've done with fermentation there's other things going on there but overall that uh, I think that's quite nice all right well next is our Pinot Noir we uh, used an Alexander Sun, Alexander Sun Country Pinot Noir concentrate not necessarily a kit because it just came with the concentrate but we had the other stuff to make it uh, we had a yeast nutrients um, acid blend what have you to that I made that on the 29th of March we bottled it on the 15th of May um, we're probably drinking this a little young it's only been a couple of months uh, but I do have nine other bottles I made a little over two and a half gallons and so what I did was bottle about ten bottles and I think every month or two I'm going to crack one open and just see how this matures how it mellows out um, what I'm reading online is six to eight months is really the point where you can really tell what you have so we're probably like I said probably drinking it too young but I want to see where it's like at now so I have some reference point in the future uh, we came out to 10.5 percent alcohol by volume um, I have not aged this in any kind of wood I did not throw any wood chips in it so there's there's gonna be no oak on this um, but full disclosure this is the first time I've done a wine kit so I just want to kind of do the basics future kits I may you know throw in some wood maybe I find a nice barrel you know used barrel somewhere maybe age in a barrel also too I bottled it in regular beer bottles I don't have the cork little machine you have, have to use to cork bottles and I don't have a lot of wine bottles so we'll give this a try again if we you know if I think down the line it is affected the taste or whatever maybe in future episodes but everything as far as sanitation what have you were you know these are as good as any you know commercial wine bottles so let's give this a try all right that's good to hear there's no hiss which means it did not carbonate so let's pour a glass over one thing I do want to say and I talked about a little bit in the video that I can see here I use bentonite to clear it. bentonite's a clay and you make a little mixture with hot water and add to this and that will help clear your wine and for the most part my wine's fairly clear let's all right uh, a little mustiness on this uh, the fruit does not pop out like normal Pinot Noir so let's give it a try Um, little acidity on the side. Again, the fruit's not uh, coming out. Um, this is not as sweet as some Pinot Noirs. Um, I almost get some of the yeast on it. Um nice color overall eh. um, this might just need a while maybe that's it but after two months it's probably too young to drink but future videos we'll see like I said I've got nine other bottles we'll see how this turns out in a few months it may mature blossom what, what have you uh, next up is our cornflake beer um, it was one of our homebrew experiments we took a uh, Mr. Beer American Light Refill Kit and we did kind of a partial mash with about 8 ounces of frosted corn flakes. Uh, the point of the experiment was to see if we could use corn flakes as kind of an adjunct. Uh, we were wanting to boost body, boost ABV. Uh, ABV wise we came out to 3.95 percent alcohol by volume which is a slight boost. Those American Beer or those Mr. Beer American Light kits come out around 3.6 percent alcohol by volume, so we bumped up the ABV a little bit. Let's see if we altered taste or body um, with with this. All right, got a little hiss. So all right, a little head, not much. Um, quite a nice. Oh, 
Carbonation seems okay. We've got plenty of bubbles in there, almost like a Boston lager type color. Mm, not much of a nose. Let's give her a try. It's all right. Um, it it tastes like now I've made a couple beers for that American Light kit. Just tastes like that. I don't know if I get any extra body or whatever. Um, like I said, we did boost the ABV, so that helps. Um, I said these were frosted flakes, but the the frosting on it was a corn sugar. So again, we just added more corn sugar to you know corn sugar to this. Um, yeah, this is all right. I mean. Um, I don't think we altered the flavor, but again, we did boost the ABV. So I would say the experiment, semi-success. All right, last but not least is our Vanilla Milkshake Pale Ale. We took a Craft Brew Pale Ale kit, and we uh, added lactose. I think it was four ounces of lactose. What lactose does is lactose is a sugar that actually doesn't ferment. So that sweetness carries through to the beer. Uh, also kind of gives it a milky, creamy, you know, mouthfeel uh, to the beer. Um, I thought, to, to, and I just wanted to experiment again with uh, lactose, not in a traditional, like, milk stout or something like that. Uh, I decided to also add a little vanilla extract, so I thought, well, all right, well, that, you know, kind of naturally would go with the milkshake theme of vanilla milkshake. Um, I added uh, the vanilla in the in the fermenter or post uh, primary fermentation we only got to 3.1 percent alcohol by volume which kind of surprised me because the starter fermentation was quite vigorous it blew out my airlock um, so i'm surprised by that because the original gravity came out to 1.043 which is kind of low and our final gravity though only hit 1.020 so uh kind of surprises me but let's see uh how this comes out Oh, a nice hiss, so carbonation should be. All right, nice. Got a nice little, oh, almost an inch head. Um, fairly clear beer, a little slight haze. Ooh, I definitely get the hop aroma. If I remember right, the Craft Brew Pale Ale kit made a really good, you know, sl slightly hoppy pale ale. So let's uh, give this a try. Man, that's nice. Um, I do get a little body and a little sweetness from that lactose, but it's not over the top in any way. Um, works well with the pale ale just a very subtle hint of that vanilla not not a lot in there and it just tastes like a little sweeter funkier funner pale ale for lack of a better term but a good beer i mean yeah nice body uh, a little bit of complexity i think that's not too bad. Like like the vanilla again. The vanilla is not strong. The sweetness is not strong. It's just a subtle hint, which is probably all when you're experimenting. Probably all you should go for. Not you know hit people in the head with that. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, I will be putting links to these original videos to see, and you can go back and check them out. Um, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good uh, content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section. Or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.